Hello and a warm collision of YYC. Welcome to my guest this morning, Sir Paul Patton. How are you doing, Paul? Uh, very well. How are you? Good, man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for willing to always dive in, take the time and have a chat. Let's, uh, let's, let's jump right to it. You are president at Wayfinder Corp. What is a, Way, what is a Wayfinder Corp? Let, let us in the tent for a couple of minutes and let's dive, let's dive into it. What is a Wayfinder Corp? Well, we, well, we <laughs> supply frac sand, but we're, we're more than that. People say, oh, yeah, you sell sand. Uh, that's not really exciting. Well, actually, what we sell a security of supply. We sell confidence level for our clients. Um, we And that's one of the things I think is a big differentiator for us, uh, Tyler, is we focus on, hey, how are we reducing the risk? For people who've got multi-million dollar frats going on, where an hour here, an hour there is going to cost them a whole lot. So how do we work together and partner with them to make sure we've got win-win solutions? But that, well, what we do is we supply sand for the fracking industry. So, um, you know, that's uh, in our society. Sometimes we got to be very careful about how we say that. Um, I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that, actually. We, we will, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, for us, it's, it's, a, uh, it's an exciting industry. I love talking about industry. I love talking about the benefits. I love talking about sand. I love talking about leadership. So, uh, so thanks for having me on. Oh, that's okay. Well, there we go. We just laid out the agenda for the call. Let me just touch on it, you know, as a marketer working with companies to really help them understand, like, what is it that, what problem do you truly solve? And you went there really quickly, which I appreciate your diligence on the value. Sand mm, could look like a commodity, but hey, let's go identify the real problem. So even talking from a business perspective, you being in the industry for a while, of course, I'm creeping on your LinkedIn. Was that a known problem like supply? Like we can't, uh, our customers can't trust us. They can't rely on us as an industry. Part of your value proposition was there, was there a real known problem that you guys said, we're going to, we're going to do it better. We're going to do it different. Yeah. I think, I think the majority of the sand that's pumped in the Western Canadian sedimentary basin, the WCSB, um, the majority <laughs> of it still comes from the U S Okay. Right. So, so it comes from the Wisconsin area. It's uh, and that's been the way of things. Now, if you look at Texas in the Permian, things down south, they not. They found their own sand. It's local, and that's the way the market's gone. Well, we said, okay, how do we do that here in Canada? It's not as easy. In Texas, okay. they can scrape it up out of the ditch and use it. Right. We don't have that here. It's got to be a certain quality sand. It's not like sandbox sand. It's it has to have a certain silica content roundness, crush capabilities, or lack of crush capabilities. So, I mean, those sort of things, I can find it everywhere. So when we looked at this, when we when the company started, it was like, hey, there is a, a need for this because it helps mitigate risk. And that's what I talked about. There's a big risk right now. Of, there's one way to get it in from Wisconsin. That's CN Rail, right? Yeah. Um, and I mean- you know, we And we all know it almost happened or kind of happened a few weeks ago too. It, whether that, Exactly. And the phone yeah, brought off, you're, 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 off the hook there. By I'm the sure way. it did. I'm sure it did. Right? <laughs> Um, so yeah, and we can touch about that. We talk about clients a little bit because everyone's like, oh, you guys must be making out like bandits. And I'm like, eh, well, that's not how we do business. Yeah. Right. But, but yeah, so I mean, so when we seen that Tyler, we we're like, okay, here's a gap. How do we get something that's close to location? And we like to call it in basin, right? Okay. It's, it's your, your in basin. We have some big plates, the cardium to do in our, our right in our backyard. And it makes a whole lot of sense around reducing risk mitigation from a cost standpoint. Uh, and we have a great product. It's a quality product. So, so that's where we looked at it and said, Hey, how do we, how do we do this? How do you guys, how do you maintain or ensure the quality of that product when you're still relying on someone else to deliver it to you? You're, so, you're getting so, it from somebody, right? Mm -hmm. No, we mine our own. That, that, okay, so you that, do. Okay, all right. That, I want to. I wasn't sure if I, I missed that window. Okay, yeah, no, you, you got it. Right. You're right. So okay, I mean, okay. The, you know, the majority that do come from Wisconsin is coming in. But we actually mine our own. We have a, uh, you know, the reserves uh, close to our okay. mine. Um, yeah. So I mean, yeah, we control in in, in, in basin. You're in literally basin. mining it. We and we control it. Curious, was this not like? You didn't. You weren't the first ones to know it was there. You're just the first ones that took that extra step to know that this is a critical element to our value proposition and our delivery model. So we we literally kind of have no choice, or we're just like every other sand company. I'm saying that very loosely. <laughs> yeah, no. Um. So there were a couple of other domestic sand companies okay. uh, in Canada. I'm not going to name drop our competition, but you know yep. they've done very well, and we like okay. to support each other. And and it's um I do anyway, and I'm pretty sure they do as well to ensure that domestic market. And, and again, it's all about how do we make EMP successful? If they're not yeah. successful and they're not drilling, we don't have a business, right? So we looked at it, it's okay, there was a couple there. It's great business, but it's not in basin. They're a little bit out there. So, okay. you know, and, and a big part of the cost and the risk of frac sand is the logistics, getting it from where it's processed mm -hmm. to where it needs to be pumped. 
So of course, the closer you are, the better that is, right? So we looked, and uh, I'll be honest, um, we actually found sand that was closer than the competitors, and we said, okay, now how do we make that work? Um, so that's that's how it started for us. So I would say in this area, we were sort of the first to find it. Um, okay. But I'll also say other people were looking. They may have been there. Very capital intense business, Tyler. I, yes, I, that's singing out loud. What's the mining process for 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 this specific frac sand look like? Like how involved is that? Yeah, so I mean, so I mean, it's it's a big open pit mine, um, okay. right? Where we um, our reserves are, you know, hundreds of feet deep in some places. I mean, you need to remove overburden. Um, so I mean, it, it is like an, an open pit mining process, um, you know, and of course uh, there's all kinds of regulatory around that, making mm -hmm. sure our neighbors and the communities are, are good with that. So I mean, all of those things as well, Tyler, add to saying, yeah, we're not just going to do a sand mine. There's a lot of hurdles to jump over. Yep. I, I like to say hurdles to run through, but you should try to go over them, not through them. <laughs> but, uh, if you're knocking the hurdles over, you're probably, it's, it'll probably kill your time. Well, <laughs> yeah, totally. Right. Yeah. So. So, yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's where it, it came from. Um, and with that, I mean, we've got a great relationship with um, a government, both at the, um, you know, local level, provincial level. Um, I don't know if anyone has a great relationship with the federal level, so I'm not going to get into <laughs> that. But um, Maybe not in Western Canada. That's you know, there you go, right? So, um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of things that went into this. I mean, around the permitting and where it goes. And, again, it's safety. We're not going to do this if we're destroying the environment. We've got things in place. We're going to make that better than we left it. Um, right. So, uh, so I mean, that's, that's a little big part of what we did, Tyler, and why we decided to get into this. And, uh, and again, we have some benefits for our clients. And of course, why do clients buy from anyone? And you provide a benefit to them, right? Yeah. So, so that, that's how the business is. And, and it's tangible really and it's often slightly different. Uh, what's, the, what's the lifespan on a reserve? Like you've, you've working in some of these mines. Are these fairly extensive? Like are these many, many years or do they, well, do they run dry? And I'm not even using the right terminology. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I mean, they do, obviously. It's, it's yeah. not like they're, they're making more sand, but <laughs> uh, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's there. Um, and ours is a glacial sand. So, I mean, some of the others are river laid down by rivers, right? As sand and the rivers retreat, they leave the sand. Ours was actually laid down by glacier. Okay. Um, however, however many years ago, when that glacier retreated, of course, it left sand, sand deposits that it picked up, right? As it was moving south, when it started moving north or vice versa, um, that's, that's how it laid it down. So, yeah, there are limits to how much is there. Um, without getting into the confidential of how much we have, let's just say I will be retired long before um, you get to the finer, end of the run. Way okay. finer run out of sand. Let, let's put it that way. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely double digits, and and it probably starts with a three. So I mean, okay. we, all right, yeah. I got it. Enough said. Enough we said. we got a lot of sand, man, and and that's and that's a big part of of the runway of what we're doing. And again, well, which our makes the capital, which makes the capital make sense, right? I was gonna say our investors need that. If if yeah. they didn't have that, they wouldn't have invested, right? No, 100%. Talk to me a little bit about, and again, this is where I love my own ignorance, uh, using that as a lead. What's going on in the frac space right now? What's happening? What are you seeing in Western Canada in terms of activity? Talk to us a little bit about just a, a snapshot. If I'm outside the industry, I know enough to know the words, but maybe I don't really know what's going on. What, give us a little bit of a you know, ringside seat. So if I could use one word, I'm going to say steady. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, in oil, and, you know, there's ups and downs, and, and I mean, the crash is here, and they the boom here and and you've heard you know oil and gas say oh yeah you we're not going to piss it away this time and we usually do uh, I, I, <laughs> i've right? seen the bumper stickers i've right? seen the yeah, bumper yeah, stickers right? yeah yeah uh -huh. think we're going to see that again because um, okay. when it comes down to i think our the emps and how they run the companies things were so tight in the last downturn everyone tighten their belt buckle and they're maintaining that discipline right so if the emps do that well, then, of course, we needed to do the same, right? So so from our standpoint, that's where, where it was. I say it's steady. Um, do I think we're ever going to have a great big boom again? I don't know. I, I don't think so. Do I think it's going to crash the way it did? Who knows? I mean, mm -hmm. it, the last crash, I mean, Saudi and, and Russia went to war. Uh, not literally, but a price yeah, war. Price, price course, war, yeah. This thing called COVID, you probably heard of it, right? So I try, I try to forget about it, but yes, yeah, I did hear about enough, it. Right? <laughs> but, but, I mean, those things always happen, right? Yeah. But, I mean, right now, I mean, if, if we stay above 60 bucks a barrel uh, for oil, 70, anything above 70, I look at as a great day. Anything above 65? 
people are like, yeah, yeah, we're steady below that. So I mean, it's, there's, it, all, it, there's it, always steady and sustainable kind of go together. The boom bust cycle. And if you've been in Calgary for any period of time, exactly. leveling things out and cutting the peaks off the top and the bottom might not be a bad thing either for 100%. just general workforce, economy, everything, right? One hundred percent. It uh, it's going to help us to. Uh, to provide that security and to make sure we're here, to make sure the EMPs are here, right? Uh, I mean, there's always things you look at, even the macro, like what happens with an election in the US. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're having a conversation the other day, well, what's better for our business? Is it Trump or, or Harris? And I'm like, yeah, well, I've got my opinions, but who knows, right? Yeah. But, but that's just the sort of things where when we are making uh, investment decisions, Tyler, it's not as simple as, hey, I know these guys are gonna be pumping sand and I know we have sand, how does that work? Right. So that's what goes into running these high capital uh, investments for sure. 100%. What's talk to me even about from a technology perspective? Is this a pretty steady state technology? You know, the oil and gas sector, lots of innovation, lots of it doesn't always get credited with the amount of innovation that I think it actually has been responsible for for the last bunch of years, fracking even being an example of that. Are we at a place where this technology is pretty stable from the sense of like, no, it works and we're using it? Or is it like, is it getting, are we are we tweaking the dials on a regular basis? Oh. Obviously, you oh. being an input to that technology. <laughs> we're, we're always tweaking, man. Okay, uh, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I, I mean, we fracked last year is not even out of fracking this year. I mean, I mean, oh, there, wow. there, okay. there, okay. I mean there are things yeah, that yeah. change and, and small little things where you think it's small, but all of a sudden... It's not small, right? So, I mean, the lateral lengths are getting longer. They're pumping more sand, right, over shorter distances. I mean, it, it's constant evolution. And then, of course, you make the change, you evaluate it, you analyze it, what worked, what didn't. So there's ups and downs, more sand, less sand, longer laterals. How does that work? Um, yeah. But that's And what, also, that's you are right. dealing... You're dealing in different geographies, different formations. Like everything is different almost every time, right? Correct. To a certain extent. Yeah, 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 correct, correct. And I mean, a lot of our clients, and we have some great partners, and we look at our, our partner uh, as, as seriously partners, right? As strategic partnerships. Um, and I mean, they're in the areas. Let's say if they're in the the Duvernay, they know those areas. It helps steady things out a little bit. Again, sustainable, mm -hmm. no peaks, valleys. We get a really good understanding. Um, it's when you you know, try to expand a business, who's the new clients, what are they doing? And you feel like you're starting, you know, from back to step one, right, to, to get rolling. But in reality, that's what makes the job fun. If it was the same thing every day and the same amount of trucks roll, roll through our site at the exact same time, it would be bored. Let, let's be honest, right? I mean, it is a highly variable. Investor, investors would love us, but you would, guys like I'm sensing you and I might get bored. <laughs> 100% we would, right? We just need to make sure, how do we, how do we keep, things going right and, and and that's one of the things i focus on is that excitement level how do we ensure our people realize hey this is a good thing uh yeah, this, we're doing we're doing we're doing quote unquote cool shit yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> to be a bit crass right? yeah yeah to be exactly. crass. And, and uh we don't wear busy as a badge of honor yeah. right oh uh, thank, right? right? thank you yeah, for saying that thank you for saying that people do that oh, i'm so busy okay well you should fix that right so, so i mean we don't wear busy as a badge of honor but we we wear excitement and continue to grow it's funny I, I did a town hall probably uh, two weeks ago now and at the end some astute individual um asked when's enough enough we've grown the, the company like this it's been sort of that hockey stick curve of growth yep. um when's enough enough um are we are, and i'm like i don't know if i would say it ever is Right, I mean, if, if the business is there, we're going to continue. When, to have, when have you scored enough goals? When have you scored? When, when, when have you? When have you? When have you grown enough as a person? When do you get it enough? I don't know. If you have that mindset, it's always there's always a new challenge around the corner. <laughs> there is, right? And, and I look at it, but guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to right size the organization, uh, organization story to sustain that growth. Yeah, catch right? up with we're, our catch up not, with our hockey stick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're not going to be putting all this extra volume and, and extra work on the same amount of people. How do we right size the organization? And once you get talking about that, they're like, Oh, okay. Now we get an understanding of what growth actually means. It doesn't just mean more is piled on each employee or on me or whoever it is shared across. And we do that. So um, I, I think that's a lot of wisdom as a leader, you know, you land a new client, you're excited. Your team sees it as just more work. How do you balance out those two psychologies, right? It's very Exa real. Exactly, right? So then it's like- Oh, shit, that just means I got to stay later today because I'm only one person. And like, how do you right size? That's a, And that message can get lost in a rapid growth cycle, for sure. Oh, it does. Yeah. It, it does. And, and, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, that's a good point. and sometimes, and I 
fear. We've grown so fast. And I, I said this to my, my leadership team and actually to some of the I got boots on the ground, the people who actually make this company, right? I was like, guys, um, I'm going to apologize because I think we got out in front of our people a little bit. The business got <laughs> ahead, ahead of our skis. I love to hear that. Got, that got over our skis, right? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, and oh, great. We signed another contract. Well, did we communicate what that, it, just as you talked about, did we communicate what that means for our people? So I said, you know what, we're just going to pause a little bit here. We're going to continue improvement with our people, our process, but we're going to communicate and focus on communicating to make sure we run in parallel, right? So our, our people come along with us. We don't get out in front. Shareholders are loving us. That's great. But if the people aren't there, guess what? The performance is not. The shareholders suffer, right? So so it's just how do we ensure that we're all in the same? And so that's me as a, I'd say, relatively young leader, even if the hairline doesn't say that. Um, <laughs> this, this is this is an audio only podcast. So no, you, you, you know, you I sound love, the way you, you say love, it. I've Paul, a, you're good. I've got a great head of hair, by the way. <laughs> um, but uh, for, for me as a, you know, sort of young in this role, um, you get excited and you get out in front of your team. And I, so I've pulled the reins and I've asked my leadership team, guys, help me pull the reins, right? And it's not to say we're not going to crack them again and get rolling, but let's just make sure we're in a position that we're all aligned and we can do this together. Um, so, I mean, that's uh, off on a bit of a tangent here, but I think it's important to talk oh, about it. It's a good solid. growing it's, business, right? We've got to, we yep. got to focus on that. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, just talking about even the leadership and you know you touched on it before we even pushed play, but the role even between yourself and your, and your customers talk to me about a little bit like, you know, service company in service of, which often means someone else gets to dictate our futures and yep. you know, how do we, uh, how do we play into that? So even that relationship between you and all you probably, you know, I'm assuming you've got some major customers that probably carry maybe a heavier weight, literally yep. figuratively than others. How do you even balance that out with the rapid growth, with the signing the agreements and making sure you can deliver on those things? Cause those are the lifeblood and they can be volatile because every, every one of our clients has their own culture that we're kind of plugging into a little bit. I say we being in a, in a running a marketing agency, we are in service of our clients like that. Yeah. And we chose to do it with marketing, but we are in service first. Like, don't forget that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So great question. I'm going to call that a loaded question. Um, <laughs> um, we've been in a really good Good position and I think I'm a personally and I think my team has got the same mentality now um, we don't BS or, or sugarcoat things we it, here's it comes down you know I mean everyone's looking at the dollar how but there's more to the partnership than just the cost or sorry the price we focus on cost um, not every client believes in that guess what they're probably not a client I've actually had people calling yeah. hey we want to we're doing this big tender, we want to come to your site. And I'm like, well, we tried this two years ago and our price, we weren't in the ballpark. So what changed? My my price didn't change. Did your cost structure change? Well, no. I'm like, well, I'm not sure it's a fit. So I mean, that attitude, and you do it respectfully, obviously, Tyler. Of I mean, course, but there's that, a lot of power in that. And it's right? sometimes saying yes in business can be easy. Saying no, it can be a lot harder. So, so I mean, with that being said, I mean, if and our clients realize, and, and I truly believe we have partners. Um, I know there's a, um, a, a Fraxan conference coming up next week, and, and I'm sitting on a couple of panels with some of our partners. And they actually, when, you know, you're, they're doing some advertising around that, uh, Tyler, it comes down to, hey, here's our strategic supply partner. And that's, that's what it is. And if you don't have a win-win, there's no partnership, right? Mm -hmm. So here's my win. Here's your win. Yeah, I want a little bigger win. You want to, how do we, how do we get there? And that, that just comes down to communication. Um, second part of that question, I think is we're in a really good position because of our location, because of the market, because it is busy. Um, we sort of interview each other. I present to them what we can do. They also present to us what their programs are going to be, uh, okay. what their, what their uh, longevity projections are, amount of wealth they're going to do. And if they're not willing to do that, again, is it a fit, right? So so we always have, have those conversations. Uh, with that being said, yeah, we have our what we call foundation clients where, you know, they're, they're the big boys uh, in the area. Um, we work very well with them. Um We've trained each other on how the communication works, what they want to see, what works for us. If we're accountable for something, you need to work with us on how to communicate. All of those sort of things. Um, and you, that client and the interaction is a little bit different than you know some of the smaller clients. Not that one's more important than the other, but again, you just need to understand. Because if you don't have that foundation where you know 
If everything goes sideways, you're keeping the lights on, then the business becomes a whole lot more stressful, right? So, so that's where we, uh, we've got some great foundation clients and the communication, Tyler, I would say in, in our industry and in, in particular, and maybe just how I communicate, um, has improved so much in the last few years. Like it's, it's unbelievable how much it's improved. Whereas before that's my business, here's, here's the RFP, fill it out exactly like it is. Okay, we will, but let's, do we want to talk about it? And that's change. And I feel our, our clients are becoming much more savvy uh, around what it takes to have um, consistent, consistent partners who can supply them, supply them sand. And it sounded like your dog disagreed. She did. Yeah. Um, she's anyways, she's quiet until she's not. Um, we said we weren't going to talk about pets, so it's off the table. We can yeah, talk about exactly. it. Um, what do you think? What do you think? I love what you just said there. What do you, what do you, what do you see as driving that? Is that the stability? Is that just maturation of the of the industry? Where are you getting more same side of the table conversations versus just get me my goddamn sand and don't bug me about it? <laughs> so, I, I, no, not that it was ever like that, but no, I'm trying no, to present no. some some left to right here. Yeah, no, I I think Tyler, people realize the risk that comes with. Under supply or not having supply. You, you mentioned earlier a CN rail strike, and, and thank God that didn't happen. And I say thank God it didn't happen. It would have been great for us, but we're sort of, we don't have a whole lot of volume extra to sell because, I mean, our, our business is in a really good standpoint. Um, and I don't want to see EMPs suffer and have programs in place because guess what? That's not going to make them sustainable. So when we communicate that, and I told you we'd talk about that pricing a little bit when people said, oh yeah, you guys are going to make it like bandits. I'm like, no, they have their price. We're not going to go to them and say, hey, because you guys need it and we have you over a barrel, the price is going to go up. So I think, I, I think Tyler, when you start acting that way, they start looking and say, okay, understood let's let's reciprocate that um, and they just have a better understanding of their business when we talked about you know the ups and downs and and pissing away the good times right now <laughs> everyone knows and they said okay let's be strategic about who we partner with and let's ensure that the supply chain is sustainable because if not their business is at ultimately at risk right so so I think that I think that's that's, that's where things changed I appreciate that. And like, you know, learning the lessons and I'll, I promise next time I'll do it differently. COVID, not to mention it, but it did change a lot of mindsets. And I think yeah. the, energy, the energy sector was maybe up for a, t a change and yep. the companies that have survived, to say that bluntly, they are doing things differently. And I'm just hearing that throughout the industry across the board. And, and it, it is. And it, I, I think for the better, I think it's a much longer game we're playing now. Yeah. Yeah. No, like it, you said, it, it might not be way up here, but it might yeah. stay in the middle a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, with that being said, I mean, we, we were just just getting started when COVID starts. So we've been sort of on that, I would call it high right now. Yeah, Let's yeah. see what they do when it goes uh, into crapper again. Um, you got to be prepared. <laughs> we, we, we'll be prepared. I mean, that's how we run our business. But I also know right now, we've got relationships we can pick up the phone where, yeah. you know, a VP or director of an oil company is going to call me at my level. The salespeople are going to be talking with the engineers. It's not just going to be screw you here, here we go yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's Actually, going to be and i have 100 percent confidence in our foundation clients that that will happen and i really never had that before i'll be honest and i've been selling in the oil and gas industry for since well, 24 years now or 20 a while years, a while right? yeah, the, yeah, okay, the, yeah. yeah yeah um i know i don't look that whole i know they can't see me but you can uh, <laughs> but uh but he you started know started when he was 14 everybody exactly, exactly. Like, yeah. but uh do you know what it's a different mentality and uh, I really and, appreciate that. And it's something that we appreciate because, again, it makes us sustainable. Makes and, and what we're trying to do is benefit our people, our communities, our shareholders. It's all one and the same, right? And uh, the economic benefit to the communities, and we share that with our, the EMPs, and we share that with our, our clients is, hey, here's the benefit we provide together. Um, so it's, uh, I'd say it's, it's exciting, exciting times. You made the comment about having having some optics and having some conversations with your clients, where like this is our this is our program for the next couple of years. This is the, what's on deck. Crystal ball. How are things looking from your you know uh, your position? You're in those rooms. You're having those conversations. You said early steady. Like as far out as we're looking, is that is that what you're seeing? Is is yeah, really yeah, solid I, I mean, program? Solid activity in the space. <laughs> I would say solid activity. I mean okay. the the rig crown has been relatively steady. Uh, yeah. I mean there's always the you know, end of Q4, when you're rolling into the holidays, things slow down a little bit, budgets are spent. 
you know, you, you move into, uh, yeah. you move in, I will defer that to Cuba, but that happens every year. Um, right. So, I mean, there's always those things, but I would say right now, we're st- I mean, the price of gas is terrible, right? Yes. I mean, <laughs> I think if that ever stabilizes and I'm not sure it ever will with the U S and flooding markets and that thing. So, I mean, I, I don't profess to know that Tyler, I got my mm-hmm. theories. And again, it's end of the day. It's, it is what it is, and I hate that saying, but we just got to be able. To, <laughs> I do, but but yeah. but it's true. We've got to be able to react, and how do we do that? And and with that being said, we are strategic about that. If we've got clients who one hundred percent weighted on gas, yeah, and if I got to choose between them and a client who's you know fifty percent gas, fifty percent liquid, it's probably where we go, right? Right. And, and and that's how it works. With that being said, there's who knows what could happen. Right. Um, no, no. There's the black swans are they're they're called black swans for a reason, right? Because you don't reason. know you don't know they're going to happen. Exactly. If I could predict it, it wouldn't be a black swan. Yeah. Well, if you predict it, you probably wouldn't be host a podcast. Should yeah. You probably you're probably right, or maybe that's what I would be doing because I wouldn't have to do anything else. I could just hang out and have good conversations all day. Fair enough. Um, yeah, it is. It absolutely. Talk to me a little bit about you. You kind of self-identified it around being a leader and being in a rapid growth environment and push, 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 grow, 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 and then go, oh shit, wait a second. You look back and go, oh, I, we've got ahead. Or that sense of like, I'm going to call it self-awareness as a leader and sometimes it's self or it's just your team going, holy shit, we've got some risk here. And yeah, yeah, this was all excitement, but here's the price we pay. Talk to me a little bit about that, even from the perspective of you know current you versus you a couple of years ago. And journeys, we as leaders are always on our own journeys and we hopefully have teams coming with us and that can get out of sync. Like, how did that become recognizable for you? And like, how did you start leaning in on it? That first day you went, huh? Oh, I might be, this might be, a, this might be a risk. We need to get on this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. And I, uh, I'll probably slow down a little bit when I'm, talking about this your whole demeanor just changed I, I, you I, just I, sunk into it a little bit right and 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 one thing i think as, as a leader i'm pretty vulnerable um i have no problem letting my emotions out there uh and when we talk about these things tyler it's it's uh, i take it personal um we came from again just starting big molly that's the name of our mind site starting that covid um we were watching pennies right and and somebody wasn't getting paid man and Unfortunately, it wasn't our vendors because they were already extended and thank God they stood by us and then we can support each other. But but when you do that, you need to manage everything, right? We went, the employees went from here down to here. Just we had to, to you know, stabilize the business because the volume wasn't there. Um, so did I micromanage? Yeah, probably. Okay. Um, am I still micromanaging? I don't know. Uh, there's but But guess what? I'm considering that. And I think that was the first step for me was, okay. We've built a good team now. We brought on some really good people. We spent time training, mentoring. Um, so I said, okay, do we need to do that? So that was the first thing that came in my mind. And the second thing I think that really struck the light bulb for me, strike the light bulb or the light bulb came on, whatever that saying is, um, is when I started talking to people and I started sensing indifference. Mm. I, I, right? So when people are like, hey, I love my job or – I dislike my job. I can work with that because you can really understand what's going on. But I got to eh, – it's okay. Things are fine. Hmm. Sort of like, dude, you're, you're talking to your wife or everything. Things are fine. Yeah, you know it's not fine. Right? You need to <laughs> and, and I was sort of like, okay, ha- when my team, and in particular boots on the ground, when you go have the conversation, yeah, things are fine. They're not. And, and, and I would much rather – passion. I can work with – this is terrible. How do we fix this? Or, yeah, I love it. That's great. You know, that, but you're not always going to get that. When you get the indifference, that's when I realized we need to take a different approach. Um, and, and that's where I said, okay, how do we get people all on the same page? Communicate better. Take the time to communicate. Um, and and so, so for me, I think that's when the light bulb went on. It's like, hey, I've got people who have an indifference if they work here or not. And do you know what? Why are we talking jobs? We always talk to careers. How do we get back to talking careers? Um, you know, so that's, 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 I think that's how it struck home for me, um, Tyler. To, and again, getting a little personal there, but, uh, but I was like, hey, how did that change? Um, how did that change? When I had a, a senior leader come to me and say, man, I appreciate you when you come to site, but I had designed that meeting and you just came in and you pissed all over my meeting. Because I came in and I had some things I'd seen, whether it was safety or culture, and I just came in and I took over. And he was like, 
yeah, but now tomorrow you're going to ask me about roles and responsibility. And that's what that meeting was designed for. And I was like, I did do that. <laughs> right. I did do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so then I was like, okay, I need to pause. Um, you know, I, I design conversations, the direction they're going to go. I'm not a person who point one is going to be this point two is that I, I, I go on the fly similar to this conversation, Tyler. And I know you mm-hmm. operate very similar, um, I do. <laughs> but not everyone does. Right. So, so that's where I said, okay, I've just got to learn to pull back a little bit. Excitement's great. You can be overexcited as well. And I think that's where we just said, okay, how do we actually get something that works and, and get everyone on the same page? So I know I'm rambling a little bit on that answer, but it's, it's just something, Tyler, you can see it in people's eyes. You can see it in their response or lack of response. And um, I, I would say that's one of my strengths my my executive coach calls it your greatness i think one of my yep. great yeah yeah living parts, in your genius right? living in your genius and all I, those ones yeah right and, and i'm totally. like well do you know what one of them is i i just seen through that i'm fine um and then how do we have conversations around that and uh, and make sure we get people passionate whether that's on the positive side oh i love it which is great and you ultimately want that or guys this sucks and we need to improve this well then we can do that so so that that's how i think it struck home for me I really like, I've had a lot of versions of this conversation with different leaders and just the word indifference is powerful. I've never had anyone use it. And it is that like, yeah, it's, you know, what, what's the joke? Fine. Freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Yeah, There's a joke exactly. around fine. And, but really being identifying that. And I also love what you say, cause I think maybe it resonates with me. Excitement can turn into reckless really quick. I'm really excited mm-hmm. in this meeting, but yet it was reckless on how it maybe sabotaged one of my other leaders and being able to recognize that in yourself sometimes as a leader. Yeah, that mirror sometimes can be a little bit like, ah, shitty, but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I started using a mirror instead of a window. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. and well, right. I use the word coach in there too. Yep. How much is uh, how much is that a factor for you? If like, I'm a huge advocate of, I usually can't see my own shit as clearly as someone else can, yep. and paying a professional to see it, I, I believe in that. It sounds like you do as well. <laughs> yeah, I know, I love it. Um, great relationship with, with the coach. Um, um, he understands our business and took the time to understand their business. And when we're talking about, oh, you know, I've got this issue with this employee or that, he knows what the roles are, how that fits. Um, strongly encouraging not to do it all on your own because guess what? It's not sustainable, um, right? So 80 hour weeks don't work. Um, <laughs> we all know there's times, oh crap, something happens, but but it's of course, just not when it when, when is when is the norm? It's that's right. A right? What is the norm? Yeah. Um, so I'm a big believer in that. Um, also a big believer then in rolling out general terms, how we talk about things. You know, one of the big ones common, we have. Common, in, language, in, common language. Common language. Integrity is the big one. And I'm not talking about morals and ethics. If you don't have those, you don't work for us. I'm talking about you say you're going to do something, you do it. Um, right? So it's just that. My coach introduced me to it. My uh, COO coaches with the same group. They now coach, I would call it the mid-level leaderships. Those are oh, I'm, I'm amazing. That was my next question. Yeah. Have you pulled, have you pulled it down through the organization? Yeah, it, Which it's got have? to, it's got yeah. to. And then of course the mid-level leaders are going to pull it right to the people who make a difference, the boots on the ground. Right. Yeah. And we 100%. need to get them to buy in, um, whether it's culture, safety, if they don't, I can preach till I'm blue in the face and you can probably tell here, I got no problem <laughs> talking till I'm blue in the face. But again, is it resonating? Are they buying in? I'm I'm on, I'm only at site you know once every couple of months and and they might think that's too often but but when I <laughs> but when I drive away what is the thoughts are yeah, are my so. leaders at site comfortable to tell me I don't know right those are those are the things that I need to make sure we keep focusing on and then okay guys how did you sell it to your team and how did they communicate right and that's how we put little things like on our performance reviews we have sort of you know, the M plus one or manager plus one. So everyone does their quarterly reviews, but once a year I will meet with you know my direct reports and their direct reports just as a way to, to make sure Same. the yeah. communication goes all the way through. Cause like you're running a race, man. I, I love that. The Olympics. I love the Olympics. I was watching the relay, right? Yeah. Americans should have dominated that thing. Guess what? They didn't pass the baton. Disqualified. A right? metaphor for so much. <laughs> right, a metaphor for so much. And, and the way I look at it when we're communicating, and that's what culture is, it's communication, right? It's it's how do you do that? Um, and when you need to go from level, and I mean, there needs to be a hierarchy for a reason, right? I mean, we all understand that. I can't have the full company calling me. I just wouldn't have the bandwidth to, to do that. But 
Am I sharing with my direct reports? Are they sharing? What my job is to do, Tyler, is to make sure that communication flows. And we've actually dedicated someone in the company, um, just brand new, a, a culture and engagement manager. Oh, right so, on. Yeah, someone who can actually make sure that happens uh, and come to me and say, hey, it's not happening, Paul. And the reason why is because you screwed up on how you communicated to your team, <laughs> right? Um, how big's your How big's your team? What's your team size? Just to give context. So we are now, I want to say it's 70 ish employees. Okay. Um. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a not great big. I think if we were to discuss a revenue per employee, I think you would be astounded at what that team can do. Uh, okay. I'm, not, I'm a, not a big believer in being fat and bringing people on to fire people when things go slow. We don't do that. Revenue, revenue poor FTE is a great number to it use because I think you can tell a lot about how a company's run based on it, that metric, exactly. in my opinion. In my exactly, opinion. right? And as mm -hmm. we continue to grow, expand, how do we design it that most of that's fall through? So we don't, right? We don't need to keep adding things here, adding things there to impact the business. g and is not, you need to make sure you spread that out over the team, right? Um, but that's how we do growth. That's how we do expansion is, hey, we're not going to hire to fire. That's I will never do that. Came from a a big company. That's a, that's a terrible cycle. Oh that's my a shitty god! Cycle to, yeah, yeah, no, and no, I, no. I worked for a big company before and a big company in the service industry, and everyone would know the name. Uh, and if they want yeah. to look at my LinkedIn, they're going to see who I work for. I wasn't a fit. I knew that from day one. Um, so I mean that that's just where okay, because that was the mentality. That's you know, go with the flow of the business. No, you need to make sure you've got a sustainable plan. And that's where that's the beautiful thing about being in a leadership role. You get to set the tone for that, and yeah. then build a team around you that, and and attract like minded people. Yeah, yeah, for how sure. How is how is recruiting? What's what is what is labor force look like? Like everyone you talk to is having challenges with, with attracting labor, the right label, skilled labor, any labor. Sometimes, what's that looking like for you guys, kind of in the service sector, and maybe from in office right out to boots on the ground? Yeah, it's tough. It it, it, okay. it, it is yeah, tough. Yeah. I, I think here in Calgary. <laughs> Um, you know, in the office, I think it's a little easier. I think there's bigger, you know, mm. the city of Calgary, where our main facility is located. And we've got two or three, but the main, they're the main one where the, the majority of people are sort of in the middle of nowhere a little bit. It's yeah. uh, it's about an hour and a half northwest of Edmonton there. Um, so it's a little bit tougher to get people. Yep. We have a lot of people in the in the local communities and stuff, but it is it is tougher. And I mean, we're competing against everyone right i mean there is that thing out there right now how, do, how does it work how does it roll out um you know of course compensation and how that works is always a big thing you treat compensation for people in the field different than you know in calgary for example calgary might love the rrsp matching in the field maybe not as much right? show me the money show me the exactly. money exactly <laughs> well, what, what's the dollar per hour right so yeah. so the, those sort of things are always constantly working on uh, and rotating around, but uh, but yeah, I'd say that's that's one of the big things that we are making huge strides on. Uh, we we manage, of course, retention and how that rolls, and and you know, mm -hmm. we are. Is getting, it an, is it is it, an ar is it an arms race? Because sometimes I would imagine you're competing directly with your own clients for a certain level of of, of team member. Is it an arms race on like I'll go across the street for a dollar, which I know the sector. I guess anywhere can be famous for that, but I know there's it, it, people have been buying people in Calgary's uh, energy sector for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and I would say there is some of that. Um, one of the things we do offer is the local people. We are right there, so I mean that, that's something that people say. Yeah, you know what? I could go work on a rig up north. Two weeks in, one week set, one week out, but I don't see my family for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Right? That, so, that, so that's, I mean, not, that's not for, you're getting paid extra because of all correct. those downsides, right? <laughs> correct, right? So that's one of the things that we see as a, an advantage and how do, how do we utilize that? I mean, like any business, there's so much goes towards comp. How, how does that fit? How, how does that how does that roll? Uh, but there's always that competition. Where did they, where did they go and, and how do you do that? And that's something we, we constantly measure and uh, mm -hmm. constantly need to work on because it is, it is an issue for sure. You mentioned earlier, even before we got started, how important being, you know, being community minded and what that means and partnering. You're in a lot of remote communities where the companies that are operating there have a huge impact on the, not only the bottom line, but the, really the quality of life, you know, in those industry towns and company towns, and you've seen it across the U S company leaves and the town falls apart. Mm -hmm. How, like, what's that for you guys being like a smaller player? And I'm not saying that good or bad. 70 people is not 700. How do you play into that? And what do you measure to, to make sure? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We can stand there proud and say we are having positive impact on our community and all that that means. 
And if you do follow me on LinkedIn, you know I get excited about community involvement. What we I do, do I whether do, it's I the do. dollars or even the um, you know uh, time that we put into supporting you, I, I I love that, and we're in a position to actually do that, which I get super excited about. Um, That's awesome. I mean, Lac St. Anne's the county we're in. It's not a big county. We are one okay. of the primary employers in that county. Um, and I think one of the things we focus on is not just the people. Look at the trucks we have going through. They they buy fuel. They buy snacks at the truck stop. They yeah. have right. So the economic impact of yeah, we're not a great big business. We can say seventy people, but we move a lot of sand, right? Yep. So so I mean, when you look at that and 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 what it entails, and truckers need a place to stay at night and things like that, it's a big driver to the economy, and we really focus on that. So I mean, that's one thing we do for the community, and I think we need to do a better job of always showing that, right? Because people are like, oh, I don't work there, no benefit to me. Well, obviously it is. And then of course we need to do a better job at some of the charitable initiatives we do, um, big supporter of food banks in the area. Um, Tyler, I know right now, and, and again, to be a little vulnerable and if I make it emotional on this, I know I have employees in the field who have to utilize a food bank. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we pay them fairly. Um, but again, it's the cost of how things work. It's like, okay, how do we improve on that? What can we do? Um, right? But when you, you sit with someone and they throw that out there, it's like, okay, here's some of the things that we can do to support yeah, yeah. you and support your communities. Uh, and I mentioned that because we are a big supporter of the food banks in the area, um, not just here in Calgary, uh, but also in the smaller ones in the field. Um, so that's that's a big one. We, we focus on health education. Um, people say, well, what are you still doing supporting libraries in Onaway, for example? Well, people need to go get a resume done. They don't have a computer. Where do they go? <laughs> they go to the library. <laughs> So there's little things like that, Tyler, that I get so excited about. Um, some of the royalties, obviously, we pay to the county for our sand goes to support the Onaway Clinic, right? So, I mean, our name is on the Onaway Clinic, right, with, with a bunch of other um, sand and gravel companies. I get, I'm proud of that. I'm excited about that. Um, and then there's also, I call it the Growing People initiatives. For example, the 4-H Club, right? I mean... <laughs> farmers and and how they work and, and the pride in those kids when they do that we support that right and I, then, I was a, i was a forest member as a kid so that, resonate, go, right? that resonates I, to the event i absolutely you're taking I, me back <laughs> right and and coming from newfoundland you say what's a 4-h club but when you actually go and see and actually you go out and see what some of these kids do and the pride and the passion they have when they're showing off off uh the cow uh that we're going to purchase here man yeah i tell you what I, I was like, okay, that strikes home. And and then how do you let the community know that you're doing that without seeming pretentious? You don't want to seem pretentious, obviously, but but I, I just want people to know. Uh, it's all about, about intention. It's all about exactly. Intention. It's about intention, right? Uh, and we're in a position now where we can do that. We're proud of it. Um, and, and that's something we're, we're super excited about. Uh, and we are getting traction there. And I think, you know what? It, it makes a difference. Um, yeah. When people... Come out and say, hey, my grandmother told me I should come look here for a job because you guys supported the Legion in Onaway. Because we, you guys. That's how it works in small right? towns, man. That's how it works everywhere, but especially in small towns. Right? So it's funny. It was like, well, thank your grandmother, but uh, yeah, come on in. Let, let's see that resume. So, I, I mean, that, well, so when I mean, grandma says you listen, that's how it goes. Well, 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 yeah, yeah. well, 100%. Uh, <laughs> a funny story about that. We, we did have one person who didn't work out and we had to move on. And, and uh, two days later, grandma shows up at the office. You can't fire my grandson. And I was was sort of like, okay, let's have a conversation around this. And I was up there at the time and with the best conversation ever. Uh, (laughs) And and I'm like, you know what? I know you're passionate. Here's why safety things to focus on and right. But it was just sort of funny how small communities work. Um, That is actually hilarious. Grandma showed up. Right. So grandma showed up. uh, Great lady. Um, And a couple of times I've been up there, I've met her for a coffee. Just to say, hey. I, I bet I, grandma didn't have both sides of the story. That's what I'm guessing as well. <laughs> she, she did. The next time she showed up with the best baked goods I ever had. Right? <laughs> um, she comes up, oh, thank you guys. And she leaves at the office. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. It's, uh, but it's just funny when we talk about grandma and how things work. It's, That's it, hilarious. It's, That's it's, a good story, man. I love it. <laughs> communities. It, yeah, it absolutely is. Curious, just kind of round this out a little bit. 
hockey stick growth, lots of success, lots of hard work to get there. Where do you see it going for you guys? Is it is it more market share? Is it expanding? Again, tough for you guys to expand to other jurisdictions because of the commitment of having kind of in base and supply. What does that look like for the, you know, if you, if you if, again, back to crystal ball with me the next five years, specifically for Wayfinder? I mean, we're always going to continue to drive value, right? To, again, people, communities, clients, and shareholders. Um, so, I mean, there's always that what's the next step? What are we looking for? Do we expand? Do we, do we go there? Right now, we're focused on just getting our feet under us. We talked about we were getting over our skis a little bit, not <laughs> just with our feet, but so like let's make sure we've got that great base that we are comfortable with what we're doing. Um, but there's always the... Hey, what does the market look like? What does the economics look like? Should we be uh, expanding? So, I mean, that's that's conversations yeah. we have with our our parent company. We have with uh, you know with our board. We have with our shareholders. Like, hey, what do we see as as being that? We, I would never say never. I would say we're not eager to overfill or glut a market. That's that's not yeah. good for business. It's not good for anybody. So, I mean, we just want to be very strategic uh, and. Uh, thoughtful about what we do there. Uh, with that being said, I think uh, a lot of some of the expenditures, say, hey, how do we improve on service, right? Are there, are there some service offerings that we use vendors for now that we want to bring in house? So, I mean, yeah, that, yeah. that's my role, Tyler, to constantly be looking at those things um, while, you know, the COO and the team, they're running the business right now. I'm saying, hey, what, what does the future hold? Um, yeah, what, what dials do you turn and what dials yeah, do you leave alone? <laughs> exactly. Right. So, uh, I mean, that's what we the- that was a very safe answer, by the way, Paul. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Paul's going to politics later. Uh, what's the capital environment look like from that perspective? Is it, again, so much talk a few years back and so many companies or so many potential investors, institutional otherwise, pulling out of the energy sector. But yet, I still see people getting money. I still see people doing projects. What's your kind of, again, crystal ball, but more just your general sense of what that looks like for cap- availability of capital? Yeah, I think in our space, I don't know if it's going to be a whole lot of new entrants, but okay. I think there's going to be m and Right. Where, where yeah, I yeah, think yeah. I think the bigger companies, they merge together, the benefits that's. And if you look at the U.S., and it's usually a, a, a little fourth side of what we're going to see here in Canada in the frack sand world. That's what's happening. There's not a lot, not a lot of new entrants coming in and starting new mines. There's some, uh, but most of the big transactions are mergers or acquisitions. Uh, that, that, that's a hefty moat, you know, it, from a, it, almost, almost literally. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's a good one. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that, that's, that's, that's how I see things. Um, and I mean, who knows, right? Um, I know in the U.S., I mean, even some of the EMPs own their own frax end mines. So, I mean, there's back, always back those... to security of supply chain. Exactly. Right? <laughs> security of supply, reducing risk. So, I mean, there's always those things that we, we keep in, in the back of our minds of, Hey, what is the exit or what, or is there, or how does that look? Right. So, mm-hmm. so I mean, um, well, the best way to get to an exit is also running a great business. Well, you know, like like never, that. never to be forgotten that. <laughs> Grow the value. What yeah. is the value? And that's, that's one thing, uh, I always get excited about and focus on and, uh, yeah, we, we see a, a great future. Um, and again, I say that when we talk careers, not jobs. And, and that's when we're, we're talking to our people, we're talking careers. And, and we wouldn't be doing that if we think we're here for a year, right? So Yeah, yeah, short, short-term, short infinite thinking, all the books that are out there around that. When you think longer game, you attract different people. It's just yeah, like it's, yeah, if exactly. You track, if, you, if, you're, if you're being transactional, that's who you attract, right? Uh, 100%, right? And one yeah, of the things yeah. we're doing now is we're focusing on the little things. Right, because if you do the little things well, that adds value. Right, we 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 monitor the small cracks really quickly because you know you use that analogy, right? You get a crack in the foundation, and water gets in there, and then the frost, and that gets bigger, and you don't repair. We monitor all of that very closely. We focus on the little things because that's how we need to make sure that we are sustainable, reduce risk, and uh, and we're doing that to make sure we're here for the long haul. I appreciate it. I had a CEO tell me years ago, he goes, Tyler, the elephants don't get you, the mosquitoes will. <laughs> 100%. That is a good one. It always stuck with me. You know? I, I love no that one. misses one. the big contracts and the big invoices, but yeah. the, the death by a thousand cuts and then your house falls over. <laughs> I know. I, well, exactly right. Uh, Paul, what's the best way if someone wants to reach out? Obviously, you, you, you seem like a guy who loves to have a good chat. So I really appreciate that. Obviously, uh, wayfindercorp.com. If someone wants to have a chat with you or wants to learn more, is LinkedIn or what, you know, what, 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 what's, what smoke signals are you willing to throw out in the world? Yeah, LinkedIn's fantastic. I, I use yeah, that. Yeah. I think it's a great way to, to learn, a great way to communicate, a great way to share what things are doing. Um, so, Paul Petten, you can find me on there. I'm pretty active. Um, 
um, try to respond as much as we can there. Uh, of course, you get a lot of, um, geez, we're in this business. I guess nothing to do what I, yeah, we're I, doing. I, yep, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's LinkedIn, but I, but I really enjoy that. That I think it works out well. Um, um, yeah. It, uh, on the website, of course, same thing. There's just contact info on there, contact. But, uh, yeah, love talking about our industry. Love talking about the benefits of our industry, not just Fraxam, but, but oil and gas in general. Uh, not just on our local communities and our province, but the country as a whole. Um, mm, love yes. seeing where bigger, we are. The bigger, bigger conversation. Uh, the, the bigger, I, I, bigger I, I, conversation. Yeah, I am biased, I have, I'm biased that way as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, so, so, yeah, excited about that. Yeah, anyone can, can reach out for sure. Paul, thanks for coming on. Thanks for being willing to, uh, we had a diversity of chat, which I love from the personal journey of leadership to how you are evolving the organization, what you see your team, and then also just what's happening in the space and what, and what you see. It's exactly kind of how I set this podcast up. It's so easy to think there's not things going on or not like, oh yeah, I'm in Calgary. I kind of know about crap. What is it? Yep. I love just exposing people to things to go, oh, if you don't think there's a lot going on in this province, it's just because you're not paying attention because there's a heck of a lot going on. <laughs> I, I love it. Tyler. Thanks for the opportunity, man. Um, it, was, it was my pleasure. It's good to meet you, man. Thank you. All right. Bye for now.